Molly from Life After Birth. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Molly Normand. I'm the founder of Life After Birth. We provide mental health and wellness services for expectant and new parents. And I'll give you a little a little background and tell you more about, about my company um, and what might be of interest to you. So um, I have a six-year-old daughter and um, I had her at the end of 2016. And it was kind of the the perfect storm of things came together and um, I got postpartum depression. And I think I was surprised because I knew I, I knew I had some risk factors that contributed to it, but I think I was surprised. I thought, oh, I can, you know, I'm a mental health practitioner. I can probably catch it. I can probably prevent it. Um, but I realized I wasn't exempt from you know, having a mental health issue. Um, and when I started to get in recovery from my postpartum depression and anxiety, um, I started to get a vision for um, uh, supporting new moms. And I created um, a group for new moms in 2017, and I called it Life After Birth. And it was in person for a handful of years. And what differentiates um, our groups from a traditional mommy and me group is they're really more mother focused. So I find a lot of the mommy and me groups um, tend to be more baby focused, focus on their schedules, their, you know, sleeping, eating their development, which is all very important. I, I am just trying to fill the gap for, you know, let's talk about the mother's massive transformation and metamorphosis that that she goes through um, changes in identity, relationship to your body, relationship to your partner, um, just just all the all the um, deeper dive issues that are going on. You know, when you're transitioning to becoming a mother or re-entering. Um, you know, some some folks um, maybe have a harder re-entry period with their second or third child. So. Basically, um, the groups are very are very process oriented, um, and we sometimes have topics. Um, I usually start the groups with a meditation, um, and then maybe I'll share something personal or something I'm struggling with, and then I just like to open it up and hear from everyone. And some weeks, um, certain moms are more full. Some of them, other weeks, maybe they're more of an active listener. But I just like to make sure to check in with everyone. Um, so the groups that we have, we have um, like a zero, like a birth to one year group, which is our postpartum group. And then we have conscious parenting groups, which is like age one to three. And it's loose. It's not like a hard cutoff when your baby turns one. Um, but we do do a birth story um, telling ritual when the baby's mom turns one or the, the mom turns, the baby turns one, <laughs> the mom. Um, so um, now the groups are currently um, in this format through Zoom. They have been since March 2020, which is like three years now. Um, we're hoping to um, start some in-person offerings this year, but currently doing it virtual. So people can join from anywhere in the country or the world for the, the groups. And I'm a facilitator and my associate, Rebecca Stevens, um, is, train, is a trained life after birth facilitator. Um, so anyone can join from anywhere. And if, if, uh, folks do want one-on-one -on -one therapy, um, Rebecca and I, we provide that, but that's in the state of California. So we're confined by our, by my license. Um, so if, um, if someone is dealing with a more sensitive issue, like a, a birth trauma, or maybe an issue with their partner, and they just need some one-on-one, -on -one, um, tending to, then we, we offer that. Um, and Rebecca also offers couples therapy. Um, and she has a, a specialty in disordered eating and eating disorders as well. So that's kind of her, um, her specialties. That's a little bit about, um, the, the services and basically it's just very, we're just very focused on the mother's mental health and wellness. And, um, we do have a few providers that we, um, we go to for some ancillary services, like we have a lactation person and a nutritionist on staff um, and like a fitness meditation person. Um, and I also have, I've met, 
I've actually met all of these women that I'm seeing in person, which kind of feels like unusual because we're used to meeting people virtually and then meeting them in person, but I've met you all first in person. So I'm meeting, I've got a chance to meet these beautiful providers recently and you'll hear more about their services shortly. Um, but I just love collaborating and I feel like, you know, mental health is one piece of the pie, but there's, you know, I like to look at things from a holistic perspective and also welcome in Western medicine. And I'm, I'm, you know, um, I'm a fan of, of medication if it's needed for certain mental health issues. Um, trying to think what else. Um, we also offer like postpartum planning services. Um, if you're pregnant, you can pre-register for um, groups now. And um, we also we're offering gift cards now, which we're excited about. If you want to, you know, if you have a, someone who's expecting and you want to buy something from them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, I just want to open it up if anyone has any questions or need clarification on anything. Let me know. <laughs> I think that's awesome. I, I just think the mental health aspect is so important. And it's it's been, I feel, and I, I may be just learning what's available out there, but it, I feel like it's a neglected um, area. <laughs> But no, just that um, I'm happy you can participate today. And also that your services are so much online because so are the my yoga students kind of all over the place. Um, but uh, we do have a lot of California ones. And yeah, I think, and that your support groups focus on the moms. Like, yeah, I remember finding a mommy group and it was great, but they did focus on the kids, but it was, I still felt it was great. But yeah, you still kind of feel that pressure that we I, we were talking a little bit, or I was talking with Rebecca at the last meeting about sort of the pressure to sort of um, be a happy new mom, <laughs> like and be lo in love with your baby, in love with your husband, and like <laughs> having the time of your life all the time. So um, Elizabeth, not to put you on the spot, but um, my my regular student Elizabeth is here live, and uh, I think you are the only one here live. So if you have any questions for Molly. Uh, go ahead and unmute. And if you don't, um, that's fine. No pressure. Um, all right. I'm going to assume she has no questions. <laughs> so thank you so much, Molly. And maybe I'll see you um, next week, Tuesday. Um, okay. So have fun at your movie night. We will uh, move on. And thank you. Um, yeah, of course. And I see Ruth next on my screen. So go ahead and unmute and introduce yourself, Ruth. Hello. Hi, I'm Ruth and I am the founder of Vibrant Acupuncture and Sound. Um, we're at my practice in Culver City. I love combining acupuncture and Chinese medicine with sound healing. Um, but as far as Chinese medicine goes, it encompasses a whole system of medicine that includes herbal medicine, um, of course, the needles and um, some body work, um, cupping, as some of you may be familiar with. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I do at my practice. And uh, what I'd love to talk about today is how Chinese medicine and acupuncture can be supportive throughout um, all of the trimesters, including postpartum. And uh, in particular, in the first and second trimesters, acupuncture um, is, is really helpful, um, particularly with preventing miscarriage if there's been difficult um, conception and like multiple miscarriages. Um, but beyond that, treating nausea, it benefits digestion, it can help improve fatigue, reduce swelling, improve circulation, it can help to regulate blood pressure, um, and also easing pain and discomfort. Um, a lot of women will experience discomfort, whether it be growing pains, low back pain, sciatic pain, even carpal tunnel, and acupuncture is really effective for that. Also headaches, um, especially women who have a history of migraines um, and, and other kind of chronic headaches where they're avoiding medications during pregnancy, acupuncture is very helpful for that. 
And then sleep problems um, that can be affected during pregnancy. Um, and then also easing mental health issues like anxiety, worry, um, and then of course going into po postpartum acupuncture is also help, helpful with that. Um, particularly with the third trimester, it helps with labor preparation. And so we're usually encouraging women to start that between weeks 34 and 35 to help ensure that labor is, is um, like a speedy labor, helping to relax the cervix and helping it open with ease, um, helping to bring that energy flow downwards to um, reduce any blockages that may have developed um, during pregnancy. Again, easing pain, um, preventing tearing um, of the perineum, easing fears and stress because labor can be, of course, a stressful event. And then um, something that's become very popular and, and known is breach presentation. And there's a therapy called moxibustion where we burn a, an herb, it's mugwort, um, on certain points of the body, and it helps to encourage the, the fetus to turn out of breech position. Um, labor induction, um, and then postpartum, of course, is such a, an opportunity for healing and rebalancing and restoring the new mother's health, um, and also helping with fatigue, um, excess vaginal discharge or abnormal discharge, postpartum depression, mastitis, um, and also insufficient or excessive lactation. So um, we like to say that, you know, there's always um, something that can be beneficial with, with acupuncture because it's a holistic form of treatment where as soon as a needle goes in, the brain releases like this cascade of chemicals, including um, endorphins and all your feel good chemicals to support um, uh, pain relief and, and um, just improving balance of our hormones and flow with the unblocking of any obstructions that are in the body. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell what um, I can say about how acupuncture and Chinese medicine can support pregnancy and beyond. Um, it's also great for preconception if um, the audience here is interested in future babies. Um, and then I'll also mention that I don't have this on my website, but um, for mothers who are in their postpartum phase and and even like the third trimester if it, you know when it's like difficult to travel and get to an office um i am uh able to travel to to do in-home services and if it's beyond my my um locale i have a network of fellow acupuncturists that i would be happy to connect you with that's so great. I was just going to say, as you were talking, and then you can um, let me know if, if I'm making the right connection, but when you were talking about as soon as the needle goes in, the brain releasing um, endorphins, um, just to relate it to, you know, the community, the Ma Yoga community, which is um, uh, yoga students, you know how when you're in a pose and maybe the teacher will say something like drop your right hip or something like that. And you think, well, I am, I am dropping my right hip. And then the teacher might, if you're in an in-person class, could come around and do a hands-on adjustment. And right, and as soon as they might even not even do too much, I have a teacher who just likes to put a finger. <laughs> she just puts mm -hmm. a finger. And then already I'm like, oh, drop my left hip. And 
that I kind of that came to mind when you were talking about the needles is a lot of this, you know, with our mental state and, um, you know, you talked about releasing the um, cervix and all of this subtle body internal yeah. stuff. The needles act almost like that finger, like, you know, touching the spot that we need mm -hmm. to bring our awareness yeah. to. And uh, beyond needles, there's a lot of coaching and teaching and educating around self acupressure. Um, there are points that we want to avoid during pregnancy, but there are points that are supportive for um, stress, muscle tension, um, promoting well-being and flow that I like to teach my patients as well, um, that they can do at home between treatments. And so even with the finger, you know, it's, it's less intense and it's less um, precise, but it's, it's still a a therapy that um, utilizes the the same kind of like channel map, and um, so women at home can can do that to themselves as well. And so you know the same points are used, and they're equally as effective and in, intentional um, for certain you know conditions. Um, and then as you were speaking, it occurred to me too that I wanted to maybe over explain a little bit like how when a needle goes in the brain sends chemicals it's like um acupuncture is really effective for balancing the hypothalamic pituitary um axis like con communicating with the ovaries or with the adrenals and so when the needle goes in it kind of that's the cascade that we're we're talking about um from the brain Thank you so much. That's so informative. Um, Elizabeth, I'm going to keep putting you on the spot since you're the only uh, um, non-practitioner here. If you have any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself. And if not, we'll just move along. Okay. Thank you so much, Ruth. Um, I'm going to say again, uh, or I don't think I did say this at the beginning, uh, before, before we started recording, um, my name is Heather Kampf. Uh, if you go to the My Yoga website, for anyone watching the video, if you go to the website and look me up, all of these wonderful practitioners are uh, my recommended professionals. So you can uh, get in touch with them that way. Um, Erica, you want to go next? Sure. Um, <laughs> it's funny because, as you know, Heather, I almost showed up at your office today. <laughs> I was going to write you first and say, it's four o'clock. Good. You need me early, but um, here we are. So um, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I just love a multidisciplinary approach, even though I can't say it very well. So this is um, so amazing. I'm just so excited to, um, you know, continue to meet everyone and hear what everybody is doing as well. Um, so I am an occupational, again, my name is Erica Reed. I'm an occupational therapist. A lot of people don't know what that is. They're like, oh, or do you help people get occupations? Um, but it's, I, I used to always say, well, we're like physical therapists, but, and um, so I'm trying not to get in the habit of, I'm trying to stay away from that just to um, find a better way to explain what we do, but it is a physical and a kind of mental approach. Um, I'm a licensed therapist and um, we, I, my internships involved both physical therapy and I had to work at a um, state mental hospital as well. So kind of a holistic view. And that's why I was attracted to it in the first place. I was a vet tech. I was going to go to vet school. Um, I was going to go to psychology. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I found this profession where I get to use it all because we also work with animals sometimes. Um, a lot of OTs work specifically with horses. Uh, and the like. And I was planning on doing that, but now I actually treat horses and um, dogs with the work that I do. Within my profession, of course, we have to keep up our CEUs as everyone does. And I found myself at a class once in Pasadena. It was a mild fascial release with John Barnes. And I had just moved to California. And I remember thinking, okay, where's the cameras? What's going on in here? This is kind of strange stuff. And, um, but I fell in love with the work and continued to take it. And it actually took me um, on my own healing journey. So the fascia work was just a catalyst for me to um, really find that deep healing that I was looking for around some issues. 
which happened to be one of my biggest issues at the time was painful sex that I had always had. And I had gotten the uh, diagnosis of being a woman and that's why I had pain. And so this is how I spent, you know, I was married at 18 and then I spent the next um, into my forties before I really understood that there was something else that could be done. So in, um, I, I went to Sedona where you can get treatment for a week and intensive as a therapist there. And I got to work with John Barnes himself and he asked what was going on. And I told him, and next thing you know, he's doing internal work and we have all these students. And, um, but it was that particular moment was life-changing because as soon as he, um, professionally entered um, into the vaginal canal. He went down and immediately I felt searing pain go up into the scar tissue of my ruptured appendix from when I was 11. That made total sense. Scar tissue vines out. We're not always told about that. Everybody's so happy, you know, if if we can get a at, a at a tiny scar, but what's going on underneath is sometimes not discussed or even known. Um, so for me, that was was huge to understand that that was what was causing my pain. So I worked with the scar tissue um, externally, internally, and was able to resolve the issues there. But then I was like, I can't just hold on to this by myself. This is this is super important information and. Um, so I started going the pelvic floor route. So I specialize in the myofascial and pelvic floor therapy. I've studied under um, Herman and Wallace, who's a big institute with it, but also I've worked with people like Tammy Kent, who actually takes a very um, um, energetic uh, approach as well. And I like to combine the two because I, you know, I think it's very important to be science-backed um, especially when they're a community of our peers and colleagues, but also um, so that somebody feels that they are getting the proper care. Um, but then also I take a very holistic approach because that is what worked for me and then started working for all my, my clients as well. Um, so I studied a lot of trauma-informed. I have a, a nonprofit where I worked with, with um, survivors of um, sex trafficking. So for me, the um, I'm definitely not your typical OT, but specializing in these, but I, I really think that if I was to say what my niche was, it would be working around the idea of, of trauma. And of course, as we all know, what, what is trauma? It can be different for everyone. We can all have the same experience and some of us might still hold on to that. And some of us might have moved through that. Um, and some of us might not even know. And, and so it's, um, it's just an approach that I, I really love. And I work with um, all stages of pregnancy or trying to get pregnant. Um, but I also love working with babies as well, because, you know, in France, you get automatically, you get pelvic floor care after birth. And I really wish that that was something that we offered here. Unfortunately, a lot of people still don't know that there are PTs and OTs that do pelvic floor care. And so I'm hoping that's changing. I, I do see a shift starting for sure. Um, but I, um, I, I, I have worked with a mom and a baby day one. Um, obviously, I'm a little limited what I do, but with baby, especially with um, after C-sections, I worked, um, I've done a little cranial sacral work too. And I worked with a lady who taught me this really cool thing that we do that kind of helps um, take the baby through what it would go through going through the birth canal and hitting the reflex point. And so just different things like that, that sometimes we don't consider when people say, well, what are you working with them for? But I, I say it's pain, it's posture, it's PTSD or P-O, I always forget how this goes, positions of past, P-O-P-T which is positions of past trauma. Um, so the reason I say that is because I work so much with the fascia and I find it fascinating because it's, it's the only organ that touches and is involved with every other organ in our body. And it is actually connected to every cell in the body. You know, uh, Erica, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt, but I actually over. think it'd be great if you could explain a little bit, because I yes. think probably a lot of people don't know what fascia is. Yes, Perfect. I was just going to do that. That's so funny. Um, 
let me, I had a picture too. Where's my picture? So the, the thing with fascia, this, I love using this little, ah, here's a picture. So here's what fascia looks like. So literally we, we get told sometimes if somebody, there's, a, we learned fascia in school. And so there's many different approaches to it. I like the John Barnes approach because it is very gentle, even though it doesn't always feel like that, but we're always just matching the person's resistance and holding there, waiting for the brain to communicate with the body and say, oh, hey, we're here. We got a lot of tension here, but actually we're not running from the tiger anymore. And I, and I use that as a quote from Peter Levine, his books talking about how we store trauma. Um, and so, the brain then tells us you can let that go. And so I'm going to explain what happens, but first I'm going to use my little model here. Um, so let's say that every one of the dots are, are cells. And then all of the sticks are the other organs, the other ligaments, um, skin, bones, everything else in the body. And then these are representative of the fascia. They hold everything together so that it has a form but also allows it to move. So in school, when we studied cadavers, this was hard. The person was not alive. So this was tough tissue. And so that's why I think fascia has been overlooked for so long because it also doesn't show up on any standardized tests. So you don't see it on MRIs, CAT scans, X-rays, unfortunately. And that's why a lot of people are in a lot of pain or have a lot of restrictions and they're told it's in your head because Nobody can see it. So of course it's just gotta be in our head, right? Um, so it's in our head and everywhere else. So, um, but, so this representing fascia, what can happen is these are microtubules and within them is the fourth phase of water, which was just recently discovered and that is a gel substance. And what they have also found is that that is where the memory is stored in our body. Cause we always hear we store memory. And so they found that it's in the water. The water is what we use to communicate. Even when we're in groups of people, I mean, back in the day when people would be, have come with a, with an in, issue, physical or mental, the tribe would all get around them to help heal them. That was their, that was their hospital. That was their method. And so they're, they're thinking that it was, it's the water within of all of us that allows all the electricity and everything to, to transfer um, and the energy, I say electricity, but energy. So here we have these and they're nice and flowy. And then something comes along and gives us stress and it could be physical, emotional, it could be perceived and not really have happened. And the the body decides it wants to protect you, which it's really good at doing. The, the extracellular fluid actually crystallizes and, hard, and hardens down. And so you get things tightening up because fascia can have up to 2000 pounds of pressure per square inch. That's pretty intense. That's like two horses standing on you. Um, so we get this one area that's locked down and then we're able to continue our body. So adaptive, we're walking around, we're moving around and then, you know, another decade goes by and then we got some more stuff going on and some more. And so soon enough, it gets to the point where we're so restricted because we haven't heard our body telling us, or we're not equipped. We don't, we aren't usually given the tools. Um, I'm always saying that instead of making us run around the uh, track in middle school or something, they, we should be doing yoga. We should be learning about our body and how to try to listen to it. Um, so these things just start harding down more and more. So our approach to this is if there, I, we, we feel around the body and we look at the body and standing and lying down and see where the fascia is pulling and maybe causing tension. And the approach is not to just barge in there because you can you can get some movement and you can get some blood flow but usually that's about 20 percent of the tissue that'll respond to that so we're working with the collagenous part that responds to meeting the resistance where it's at and what they found is it takes about 90 to 120 seconds for that to start releasing so we usually hold the techniques for three to five minutes at least and when i teach people how to do things at home, I'm, I tell them to take that approach sometimes as well. And um, big fan of yoga and everything. And a lot of my clients are like, but I do yoga. And I'm like, great. So then take a pose that you find is very beneficial and take it aside and spend some time with it, really softening into it. I try to explain to them that it's not a do, do, do. We're not trying to release. We're not trying to, it's a softening, surrendering and allowing. 
So kind of a different approach. Um, there's three parts of the myofascial. There's also, um, there's a release, there's unwinding and there's rebounding and rebounding is a type of way we work the body to get all the fluid moving and trying to find all the other areas that aren't moving. So I use this approach with pelvic floor therapy um, because with uh, pelvic floor therapy, I may or may not do internal. Of course, it always depends on the person and what needs, but here's our pelvic floor. There's all our hammock of muscles right at the bottom. And you know everything in there is fascia, is, is connected by it. And here's my little pelvis that's just full of all the organs are a little in a little disarray, but you know, you imagine you've got all this fashion between everything. And even if you just have a hip that's rotated, which is very common, that can twist everything in there. And then all of a sudden you have a bladder that doesn't have room to release or even the colon. I work with um, constipation and things like that because that has everything to do with what's going on in the pelvic floor. Uh, this was wonderful. And it's, it's so I'm fortunate to, I don't know if you know Anna Rahe, but she works with fascia and she used to teach at a studio that I used to work at. And the moving is so different. I'm so fortunate to know about it. So I'm, thank you so much for being here. The light is coming in. I'm like, thank you. No, I'm angelic. Right right now. You. <laughs> yeah, I love Anna. Um, I was bummed she had to move. I used to take her classes as well. She, it was yeah. Thing. So, um, but uh, also, there's um, Carrie Warco is a well-known yoga teacher. And the thing that struck me that you were saying is like people say that, um, you know, you were saying that uh, you get told that the pain is in your head because they can't see it on the uh, on the test. But um, they also say, oh, well, you're getting older, you know, um, we're expected to sort of, I don't know, grow old and, and slump over. And if you watch Carrie Warco, who she knows all this stuff too, and she was a dancer and she moves like Anna Rahe and you watch her on her, what she posts on Instagram and stuff. And this woman is moving so freely. She's, it's like watching a child play and she's, I don't know how old she is, but she's older. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Yeah, no, um, I don't buy into the, uh, it's the older, I mean, it's, yeah, we, we've had more chances to get our fascia stuck or to get our mind stuck, you know, which is, which is our fascia is an extension of our mind is, is one way to look at it too. So yeah, I, I am always so inspired by people like her that just get, you know, oh no, no, it doesn't have to be. So. Right. That's so true. I thought I could fix my, my angel light, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Erica. Um, Go ahead, Sally. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. It is so fun to see all your faces <laughs> in the virtual world. Um, my name is Sally Hayes, and I am the founder and owner of Women in Self Healing or WISH. And we are a massage therapy company that specializes in fertility, pregnancy, and postpartum massage therapy. I now have a team of eight practitioners that work with me. Um, we work throughout the entire pregnancy journey. We work through postpartum. I'm on a very big mission to educate people about the importance of pregnancy and postpartum massage. Um, pregnancy massage has been proven to decrease labor time by an average of three hours. It has been proven to decrease the need for medication and improves newborn outcomes also decreases anxiety, depression. Um, during the pandemic, anxiety and depression and postpartum went skyrocketed. There was some statistics, it was like hovering around 14 to 19% and went to like 70%. Don't quote me on that, but it was, it was astronomical. And um, Malaysia is a country that has the lowest incidence of postpartum depression in the world. And they receive massage for 30 days um, post-birth and a lot of Asian countries do this as well. Um, India is 30 or 40 days, China, they, body work is common and widely accepted. And so I am personally on a mission to educate America that this is something we really, really, really need to be doing. And we also have a, um, special treatment called the wish method, which is an abdominal massage. A lot of Americans don't do abdominal massage. I've spoken with some of the bigger spas and they say categorically they do not do abdominal massage. It's their 
there's an absolute refusal to even, they don't allow anyone to do it. Um, I think it's extremely important um, for digestion, lymphatic drainage, but also if you are actively trying to conceive or if you are planning on trying to conceive in the next three to six months, I wanna see you come in and let's get you on a program to start working and prepping your body so that you can be in the most optimal zone to try to conceive. And also it's really great for postpartum. So we do work on cesarean scars and we work with people who give birth vaginally or cesarean. And we also believe that this can help prep you for just a healthy lifestyle. But also if you are planning on having multiple children, it's really great to go ahead and do this postpartum work, do this abdominal work to get you back um, prepped and ready for future pregnancies. So that's basically what we do. Oh, and we have an office in Beverly Hills and we also have mobile therapists throughout Los Angeles and Orange County. And can you also talk about, because one of the things I thought was most interesting was that you do um, uh, instruction for infant massage over Zoom? Yes, I don't know why I, forget. I always forget the the infant massage piece. On our website, womeninselfhealing.com, we have a blog which has video instructions. There's a, a three-part blog to help teach people to do infant massage. Infant massage is really so lovely and beneficial for the infant, but also for the parents or caregivers, especially for the non-birthing parent to bond with the child. It's a really great little ritual and habit before you put the baby down for a nap or you're putting them to bed at night after the bath. When you're going to put lotion on anyway, we can instruct you um, via Zoom or you can come into the office or the therapists that come to your house can do it as well. And we are essentially teaching you to massage the baby. So some people really want me to provide the massage service for the baby. We do work directly with the baby, but I also have a really fun teaching doll that I can, <laughs> I can do via Zoom. And it, it's just really great because it empowers parents to feel that they're you know, able to soothe a baby who maybe has um, a, like gas or is just a little overtired or cranky. And it also gives you some tips and tools to to start that habit of therapeutic touch. I think that if we can all learn from day one appropriate therapeutic touch, I think it is going to also put your kids in a much safer position to know, you know what is appropriate touch and what is not appropriate touch so that when they get into their older years, they will, they will understand. Um, so I, that's a really big piece for me too, imparting appropriate touch early on, especially because we're in an American culture where People are very confused about touch is the best way I'm going to say that. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And um, I'll share this. I think I was talking about this before I started recording. No, I'll share. I just got back from a teacher training in India and everybody there um, was going to this body worker that uh, partners with the teacher trainer that organized everything. And they were coming back just like blown away at how what a healer he was. I, I don't mean to air quote like uh, he wasn't, but um, just that's the word they use that he was a heal. And these are like fit, you know, teachers, yoga teachers, fit, strong people. Um, I didn't go to him because I had never done body work. And when I told, told people this, they're like, well, what do you mean you've never done body work? You've had a massage. And I was like, my husband rubs my shoulder. <laughs> like that. I just never had. And I think, um, you know, I'm a woman of a certain age. I definitely didn't grow up like my parents didn't do this. My mom didn't talk about it. Like, and now, of course, and I also grew up in the Midwest. Um, I, now I moved to LA and everybody gets a massage all the time, <laughs> you know, but I think I had gotten so far, you know, I was like, oh, it's not my thing. I'll rather get a mani-pedi. But now I'm starting to, I was telling Ruth, I'm starting to learn like the more, um, you know, we do have such a narrow understanding in the West of what um, what is out there and how to be in our bodies and how to be more comfortable in our bodies. And um, I'm so grateful to all of you for being here to help share that with um, the Ma Yoga community. Uh, I really wish I had known more of this when I was pregnant, um, but I will say I did try to do infant massage on my own 
and um you know it's you're insecure and you're like okay well I'll press here you know I don't know um and you fuddle your way through it and you think well I don't know is this relieving she's still crying why is she still crying am I doing it wrong and all of these things but I must have managed to do some of it right because my child that I, I did infant massage more on my second child because she was fussier than my first child and she was asking for it like well into the toddler years. So um, it really can be, I, I'm so happy that you don't just do the massage, you teach the massage because, you know, parents can really, you'll have those memories of that time and that bond and, and then that bond that you form when they're young, I, I believe that how it starts out, not that you can't fix it if it doesn't start out well, but if it starts out solid, that parent-child bond carries into, I have, you know, almost two teenagers now, one teenager and one almost teenager. And I am so lucky uh, at just, I'm just so lucky <laughs> with the relationship that I have with my girls. Um, you know, a lot of times parents will talk like, oh, you know, she screamed and yelled at me. I'm like, my kids don't scream and yell. I scream and yell at them. And then I tell them, I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> they really don't scream and yell at me. We've never had a We've never had like, I remember when my daughter was, uh, my first daughter was in kindergarten. We were with some friends with older kids and it was time to go and the older kid didn't want to go. And she's like, mom, I hate you. And my daughter and I were like, <gasps> <laughs> but then I sort of thought back to my childhood and I'm like, oh my God, someday my kid's going to tell me they hate me. <laughs> and, um, and I looked at my daughter and I said, you're going to say that to me someday. And I just want you to know that I, I will know that you don't mean it. And she, of course, said that she'll never do it. She'll never say it. To me. Well, she's 14 and she's never done it. She never told me she hated me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. That was kind of a side personal story that's kind of irrelevant. But um, the personal touch, I think, is important um, and appropriate healing touch. Um, all right, Elizabeth, last chance. Any questions for any of these wonderful ladies? So I am, so as advertised, this is um, supposed to be a um, panel and then yoga. And Jessica, who runs my yoga, she was like, if the panel's going, just let it go. This, we understand the value of this information. Um, so that's fantastic. So one last time before, um, before I, I'm, I'm still going to do a little bit of yoga for the, for the recording, but does anyone that feel like they had something that they didn't say that they want to say, and you can just unmute yourself if, if you do. I um, said a lot, but I, I, I don't think I ever got to like what, besides working with babies, um, what I actually do um, with the myofascial somebody doesn't have to come just for, pel for pelvic floor, pregnant or not, wanting to get pregnant or not, they, that doesn't, you know, the myofascial itself is just a beautiful treatment to help with, like I said, the pain, the posture, um, any tension in the body, things like that. But with the pelvic floor, what we work on as pelvic floor therapists are things like the leaky bladder, C-section scars, um, constipation, um, clearing congestion to, um, clear things up to get pregnant, to uh, work with prolapses, um, trying to prevent prolapses. Um, yeah, so there's quite a quite a range of think painful sex. Um, and I think those are some of the main, main things. Yeah, yeah. Just because I know some people aren't familiar with what we're doing in there. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. 